Hi guys, I'm Jeff from Epistax Golf, and I am down, as you can probably see, at the awesome facilities down here at Precision Golf. We're going to do a putter fitting. Now, I've got to be honest, I've always been a bit sceptical about this. Putting is that. It's the most simple movement. I just, I don't see how this is already necessary. I've heard that it works, so it's going to be really quite interesting to see how it works, and to be quite honest, if it really works. So yeah, let's do this. If you feel the putting isn't great and you're not happy completely with what you've got, what would you say is the main problem? Would you say that it's how you read the greens, being able to start the ball on the line that you've picked, or distance control? What would you say are the sort of main issues? Mm. Probably distance control. Okay. Kind of thing. Yeah. But I think is it probably fair to say that I'm not bad at reading greens. Well, I wouldn't put you in the sort of like the lowest percentile of people who can read greens. No, but that's why I'm at 20 handicap. You know? <laughs> it will work a lot today on aim mm. and how you aim the putter, um, because I think from all the things that I've done, it's very clear to me that when people go and get a putter in a shop, they pick up what they like. Um, they'll go to their local putting green yeah. at their club. They'll know that they've got a relatively straight putt, and then they'll miss a few to the left because they might aim that putter left. What they don't realise is that they aim that putter left and that they've just hit three perfect putts. So then over time what happens is you very quickly groove either an in-to-out stroke, an open face at, at contact, or some sort of release or hang back to try and find target with that putter. So it's um, kind of the same with a, like a golf swing. You, you start developing your own... 100%. <laughs> So we know exactly what we're dealing with, how heavy it is, what the swing weight is, the loft and the line, all that stuff, just so I can see when I look at your numbers, if for instance there was loads of loft on the putter and you were launching it quite high, I'd immediately know yeah. that's why. You can see each of these boxes here, there's a mind-blowing amount of data. <laughs> Launch is very, very important to me. That's to do with the loft on the putter um, and how you deliver that into the ball. That's affected by shaft, how much you add loft or de-loft, and the arc, whether you're hitting up or down. Um, so we'll look at that and focus on how you're creating it. Um, I'm also going to look at the face and the track and the face to path here to see how you're delivering the putter through impact and why the ball would start in the direction that it's going. The main things, like I say, I need to get you in a position that's going to allow you to swing the putter the best. Um, get the loft then in the right place so it's going to get a smooth roll which will help most with your distance control um, and then we'll start testing some heads and looking at is there something that you aim straight most of the time. We're back here to step in, get into a position where you're ready to putt. Once you think you're lined up straight at the hole and you're ready to putt, just freeze and say yes or okay or whatever mm -hmm. and try not to move the putt head. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, roll the ball out of the way and use the laser there to see where your putt is aimed. So from 12, 30 feet, it shouldn't be too hard to hit the hole. And his last words. Yeah. Okay, so that's out at the number one on the right of the hole. So all I'm going to get you to do, I don't want to guide you too much on anything. I'm not massively fussed about the exact results mm -hmm. of whether you hit the hole or not. I just want you to try and hit putt stuff in. Just try and give me as close as you can to kind of 10 identical putts at the same sort of speed. Uh, and the same sort of shot, okay? Mm -hmm. So remembering, you aim your putter right, mm -hmm. okay? Your putter you walked in with, the one that you said is your gamer, yeah. okay? This is, if you look, stroke one of one, at the bottom here, so I'm going to scroll through so you can see the different putts. Okay. That little purple dot there behind the ball is the low point of your swing. 
So having that behind the ball and visible is a good thing. It means you're hitting it slightly on the up. Clearly for me, that is you trying to pull it left because you aim that part right. And that's the compensation you've built in. So I want to see out of those putts, how many do you stroke out of those 10? How much is this changing around? How much is the stroke length changing? How much is the shape changing? And how consistent were you on those 10? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can see clearly yeah. it's the same thing every time yeah. that we saw on those numbers. The path is an out to in path, mm. the face tends to be closed, and all of that is compensating for the fact that you aim that part right of the hole. If you had a perfect stroke of that part, you'd miss everything to the right. Yeah. And that's why, for me, getting something that you aim straight mm. will encourage you to have this through the ball straight and you will groove in a straighter path. Okay, so we'll start with some, uh, some funky stuff first. Oh, wow. Slightly off That's, yeah. Like, you know there's, um, there's wedges that you get where yeah. they're like, Anti-shank wedge, yeah. Anti-shank putter. I'm just testing at the moment whether Joe is somebody that focuses more on the entire shape of the putter or whether he's somebody that focuses more on the top line. It's not something that he will actively think about. Everyone has different biases, whether they're left eye dominant, right eye dominant. Um, but I'm basically going to change shapes of putter um, and then I'm also going to change the necks and offsets and I'm going to see what moves his aim around. So far, we've had more bladed end of the scale of heads. Uh, this is obviously a funky one just to, to throw in there because it's an unusual one. Um, but he's tended to aim more right, so I'm going to change to a mallet now and see if that changes his aim either more right or to the left. Dead centre. The worrying thing is, <laughs> really hate this head. <laughs> Well, it loves you, mate. I know. Obviously, I am led by you just like I was downstairs, yeah. and I'm just trying to get you to putt the best that I can using the skills that I have with the tools that are available. Yeah. If you say to me, you hate that head, but I'm saying at the moment that the average, where you're slightly left of centre, slightly right, and one in the middle, which is basically dead centre, uh, it's also at the opposite end of a scale from a blade, so we're still going to try different necks, different combos, but that's ahead for me. If you're asking me what am I going to putt better with, the one that you aim straight. That currently, for now, just like with the shafts downstairs, that's the leader in the clubhouse. We'll leave this here saying, right, we know that was a decent one for us. Yeah. You're going to aim that straight at the hole, yeah. even with some compensate, you know, some, some uh, variance there, to slightly left of centre, slightly right of centre and centre. It's still inside the hole. That definitely suits my eye a bit more. Cool. Okay, so that one, again, it's a head that you prefer the shape of. Yeah. We've had just right of centre, centre, just a fraction right of the centre line, and then the centre line, so it's very close to dead centre. Look at how similar those two putters are. Mm. Yes, there's a cutout here, okay, but they're about similar depth. Yeah. They're a very similar neck, okay? One of them you aim inside the hole consistently, yeah. and one of them you miss the hole completely. But people would yeah. probably tell you, well, if you have a blade, you can use any blade. Yeah. If you have a mallet, this is a similar sort of thing, no problem, just try that, you'll be fine. So, slight change of tack. Like I say, I'm really happy where that bit yeah. of yeah. was. Yeah. Just seeing a few different neck configurations, shape configurations. Right, Jim. With different head shapes, you're getting different results of yeah. how big the variance is between each aim, where the variance of the aim is, is it left, right, in the whole lot. You can see how even if the putters are set up in the same way, mm. by changing from one to another, you would affect repeatability and consistency. Yeah. 
Looks like Madonna. <laughs> yes, exactly the same as Madonna. <laughs> Every way except price, construction, material. Other than that, it's perfect. Identical replica. <laughs> Expensive test. It's something is why you would test yeah. so many models, okay? Because using a silver blade earlier, which had a plumber's neck still, mm. a very similar shape, but just tiny, tiny little differences. So the difference in the shape of the bumpers, yeah. the difference in the edges on the corners, like literally the most minuscule differences when you look at, say, you know, got a couple here. You know, something like that, you know, it's just a slightly different colour, it's got a slightly higher bumper there, there's a slightly different shape. Those things, you look at it and think that can't make any difference. Yeah. Like, it, it does. It's so personal and individual, there's no real kind of formula that I've found other than, you know, I can change the depth and then change yeah. aim with the mallets and stuff. Like I say, I put that other one that you didn't like in, jumped immediately to the middle of the hole, super easy to mm. align for you because my personal theory having spent the time with you and talked to you is even though you don't like that putter you're somebody that has like a uh i don't know how i'd even describe it, like a like a fussy eye you know you're you've got the shape there but yeah. you're telling me that you, you know you're looking at a bit of the putter there another bit there and you're trying to find things to align it mm. that putter there was so big and it's just got those three blatant alignment lines on and it's very plain, yeah. you know, it, yeah. it's ridged, but all those milling lines are also in the same orientation as those mm. up lines. So you've literally got a block of head with some lines on <laughs> and some more depth, and that helps you aim straight and be consistent. Yeah. Now, like I say, because you don't like that head, there's no point even considering it. Either of these, you're in a position where you're aiming a lot straighter than you were with your own putter. Yeah. Um, you're lining it up faster. You've got more margin for error for a less perfect stroke. Um, and that can only, in my eyes, that can only improve your pattern. So that was absolutely fascinating. Um, there was a lot more data in that than I thought. Like I think maybe naively beforehand that the putting stroke is some really simple you know, routine. There is so much more going on in the putting stroke than I realised. And that has really kind of highlighted it to me. It's also highlighted how different head shape, like how they can have such a massive impact on your alignment and your swing. It was fascinating. Safe to say I'm not sceptical about it anymore. It definitely showed that it works. Thanks for watching guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a little bit informative. In the comments, let me know if you've ever considered getting a putter fitting, because it's not something that I'd ever really thought about before. But now I think I'd definitely recommend it, whether I'd say it's necessary, it's up to you. But yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and follow me on all other social media platforms. I'm at OpenStanceGolf on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time, cheers guys.